Hello, everybody. Hello to the replay people. Always takes a second to be live. This is our live show for Historical Hellions. Uh, we read This Other Eden by Marilyn Harris, which was crazy, <laughs> bonkers, and insane. So, wow. <laughs> And dark. And I was dark. surprisingly yeah. dark. Yeah. So this is a gothic historical romance. Um, we'll go around and we'll share our ratings. Uh, Jess, you want to start us off with your rating? Yeah. Um, I DNF'd it. <laughs> I... 150. Uh, yeah. 150, 160 pages. So. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I rated it two stars. And the extra star came from our mad king, I will call him Thomas, and his audacity. It um, never seemed to cease, and that kept me reading. Uh, so I'm gonna, I, I rated it two stars, um, which I think was a little generous. I was really invested. I think that also stems from my investment into mm -hmm. like seeing how far she was going to take this. So yeah. I was also generous with my two star rating. I gave it two stars. <laughs> um, although I did just say to Jess, I was like, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, like maybe it does deserve one star. Um, I skimmed a lot of it. Well, let me, okay, let me back it up. I thought that this live show was tomorrow. So I started reading this at seven o'clock in the morning in a panic and I put it on text to speech some dude named Jamie with a British voice read this oh. to me. At least Jamie added some flair. Jamie probably yeah. added a little bit of flair. Yeah, he he's British. So he read it to me uh, for six straight hours while I work today. I honestly felt like I was in hell. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't give it a one star because I feel like it was worse because I was listening to it in that like monotone text to speech. So I'm giving it a two star for like grace, just grace. Well, you know what? And I gave it two stars for her ability to wax on poetically. It's not about everything, which really right. made it hard to prioritize what to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And then I kept thinking, you know, this is a book that was written in like the late seventies. So that's true to form, but, um, and I also did, I will give her flowers, and I thought that she did it structurally. It was interesting, but that also did it a disservice because the chapters felt even longer. Structurally, okay. it's, like, made up of, like, not only where you are, but, like, time. And so there's time jumps. There aren't really chapters. And although it's in third person, there were, like, perspective switches. And so I did think, like, how she got her characters into certain situations, although very slowly were creative. Um, I'm just defending this too. Yeah. <laughs> I guess if you came out of this, like reading historical fiction and you really cared about like prose and eloquent writing, maybe, maybe this would be for you. But for me, I could care less about writing style. Like that is never my focus yeah. in the book. Um, and I struggled to even call this a romance. I was really annoyed because they're barely together. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. And I saw a book that was like, if you hate it when the love interests are never together, you're going to hate this. So I made it up to like 150, 160. And they had not been together since the beginning where he like kidnapped her and had her whipped publicly. So, <laughs> And they're not even together for that because he's not doing very much kinging. People are like arresting her and she's being imprisoned. Like, are they, that's a really good point. They're rarely on page together. And when yeah. they are, he's like gaming her and trying to And she's 16, her. which like, go no, thank you. Yes. So for the people here for the tea and did not read it, we'll give you a quick little synopsis. So it starts off with our heroine literally being imprisoned by this man, Thomas Eden, who is our hero, question mark? Because again, I struggled to call this a romance. He um decrees to like have her publicly flogged and she's like in this decrepit infectious dank cellar in the beginning of the book yes okay think iron mask man in the iron mask do you remember this do you remember this with leonardo dicaprio 
right? Like yeah, think that. that. I think like Count of Monte Cristo. Think exactly. like that kind of prison. Precisely. She's like laying on the floor in the beginning of the book to like get some sense of like fresh air on the bottom of the floor because everything is like moldy. Oh, it's disgusting. Oh yeah. And next to that pit where they literally throw bodies into it to decompose. Yeah. Because of like that poisonous gas. I remember. There's that. dead bodies, dead animals, just everything. And she is put in this by our hero who is 40 and she is 16. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she makes somehow she makes her way out of the situation or she survives the situation, of course. So she goes to live with her sister, who she has a very questionable relationship with. Like her sister is jealous of her because like her husband likes her. I don't really understand that dynamic. But her sister's not even married. No, and her siblings were trash. Her siblings yeah. were trash. Okay. Because you know, Thomas is over here uh, having a midlife crisis. He's not doing a lot of kinging, he's a fifth baron. Okay, what do you really got to do? He wants some excitement, so he's doing this underground smuggling. Homegirl saw his secret passage, but everybody knows. Everybody knows you're doing the smuggling. And so he's, like, trying to build this, like, tunnel. And she saw that secret passage, so he has her whipped. And, like, yeah, like, mm -hmm. Samantha says she goes to go live with her sister, who's, like, jealous of her. She has a brother that's, like, jealous of her. It's just, like, they were trash. I'm yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, they were trash. And somebody asked why she was whipped. Yeah, so apparently she saw something that he was doing that she wasn't supposed to see. But also she just was, like, not impressed by his advances in general. Yeah. So being the wounded man that he was, he had her whipped. Yeah, she kneed him in the balls and he didn't take a liking to that. And many people saw that. And, yeah. you know. So but no one wanted her to be whipped but him. Like, even the person that, like, his job was to do it, he almost didn't do it. Yeah. He's yeah, like, I don't whip Like, he kept saying that she was a woman, she's a child. And this is, like, yeah. he's, like, the guy that, like, enjoyed doing it. So what? Yeah. And uh, he feels bad. He feels bad mid-whipping because it makes him look bad. Doesn't stop it. But, but she was like also, like, beloved in the community. Like, sh her yeah. father was very well known and people knew her and like liked her. So they weren't happy about the situation. Mm. Right. Yeah. Um. So she survives that and she goes to live with her awful trash sister and he ends up like finding out that she's there and is immediately like, Oh, I, I want to be with her after like he publicly like decreed for her to be flogged because she looks hot in a masquerade costume. Let's That's go. when I stopped was like this whole masquerade costume she was putting on and he was in town. Right. So like he leaves Eden, the fortress of Eden, because he's all about the smuggling still. So he's like, mm -hmm. I need to make more contacts with the French for the smuggling bit. So, yes, it's way more bonkers and dark. See, Jessica is going to bring you that hilarity to where I can suspend my disbelief right. for the gag. Okay, she's gonna gag you and she's gonna douse and sprinkle you in some spice and it's all fun and games. Like we know everything's gonna be okay and we know we're in short in HEA. But there was a point at which where I kept reading because I'm like, the hero was so irredeemable. His outlook on servants and women was so detestable and he kept being like at the hands of everyone's misfortune and not seeing it. Like if he was inconvenienced, then he would have a little bit of, just like when she's getting whipped, like he saw everybody's faces and how they were thinking about him. So he felt bad and takes to drink instead of just having her cut down and like, you know, and even when he's like into her at, after this masquerade, he's like, oh, I'm going to like treat her like a lady now. She's still yeah. like underage. It's yeah. ridiculous. And her sister, her trash sister is like mad that she's not giving into his advances because it would help their situation because she's living above her means. Okay. Yeah. And this wasn't, like, a morality chain thing, like, where he's, like, fuck the world, but, like, I'm going to worship her. No, he was still, like, a trash person to her after they were together. I can't. And very rapey, okay, and then facilitating the, the assault of other characters. Yeah. In, really in the story. Oh, girl! Yes! yes. I almost, like, it, 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 like, the plot, I mean, it's so hard. The reason why I started plotting it out is because it's so slowly paced. And it's so, yeah. like, I don't even want to call it slice of life. It waxes on poetically about everything that I'm like, I need to gl glean out the beats of this because I'm getting lost. And the chapters are so long. There's, like, a 20-year time jump, like, five-year time jump, so like, to the point where 
you're you're switching in and out of characters like point of view even though it's in third person out of nowhere um even the way it starts out she starts out in the prison and getting whipped and then you backtrack into why like it's like this weird way that the story is being told so yeah he ends up like meeting someone he knew growing up who again he's interacting with characters that are described with having a childlike mentality and so he's like pushing his agenda on this like character named billy who's a virgin and like he's got to get him laid and it's just like absolutely deplorable and disgusting uh people are i mean there's trigger warnings for suicide and like he's the linchpin of all of this stuff that he's doing it's crazy that whole plot See, at least, like, Sky O'Malley was, like, entertaining bonkers. <laughs> and then this one is just, like, what is I'm, there to yeah. like? <laughs> I love that you said that because um, a lot of people in – or not a lot of people. It was two reviews I read. Um, compared, you know, this book or this style of writing to Beatrice Small. And I was like, okay, yes, that book was bonkers. Beatrice Small's books are crazy and bonkers and all over the place. And you're unsure if you're going to get an HEA. But it's entertaining in a different way. Like, you actually root for our heroine in the entire book versus this one. You're just like, what is going on? You know, and there was a point where I think you may have gotten to this point, Jess, where she's in the carriage when she's like traveling to go stay with her sister because of the trauma. It's almost like they don't want her around because everyone is like lamenting like her misfortune and she's so sad where she's in the carriage and she vows to get revenge on him. Yeah. That's when I was, I kept waiting for that to happen. I'm like, okay, this could get interesting. Like she wants revenge. She wants him to pay. That never comes into fruition. It just doesn't. Well, that's what I was wondering. I was like, is this the good part where she's going to like go back and like take autonomy and like, just like take control of her own life because she was 16 and they kept on mentioning how small she looked and how, like, she looked like a child. She was acting like a child. She couldn't, like, stand up for herself. She was just, like, sitting in rooms alone, like, not talking to people. So then I'm like, how is this going to be our romantic heroine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She looks like she's, like, 12 because of her size. Yes. And doesn't do anything. She li- But then she did that in the carriage where she's like, I'm going to get revenge on him. And I was like, maybe this is where, like, it gets interesting. That's what I thought, too. Why? Someone did say in one of the reviews, like, it felt like she was just sat down and wrote and just wrote whatever she wanted and didn't, like, plot it or think about it. And I'm like, that actually makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That tracks. That tracks. It is tragic. It really is. It's, it's just, like, the limited, like, his right-hand man, Raglan, like, his storyline, I thought, like, maybe this is going to be interesting. Maybe he's going to, like, you know, uh, seek out revenge against the king, which he does because, speaking of like characters being described as childlike. Like he does um, a really heinous thing to uh, a young girl because she's a virginal. Of course she's a child, she's a child. Um, And like facilitates her like getting assaulted which was like someone that was really close to his right hand man. And it's just like sad because everyone's kind of like confined by the whims of this mad king who's bored with his life. He's just like bored. And the lengths that he goes to bet her in this book is crazy. Like, he spins this, like, plot against her sister. So now he's like, I'm going to treat her out like, like the lady after seeing her at this masquerade. He starts sending her invitations. She's ignoring them. I don't yeah. know if that's a part of her, like, revenge yet. I'm like, her being obstinate was, like, her only, like, rebellion. It didn't mm-hmm. get any more interesting than that. And so she's turning down invitations. So he's like, I'm going to throw your sister in debtor's jail. Okay, that's going to get her to come to my bed. He does it. That doesn't get it. Then he imprisons her again. Okay, in order to get that, that don't work. Then, you know, she's like, I want my hand in marriage. The man's even willing to fake a wedding. Fake it, not marry her. Fake, yes, yes, girl, the fake wedding. And then after that, after betting her, he has the nerve to be pissed off at her and blaming her that their, like, child is illegitimate. Because mm-hmm. of his games. I yeah. mean, the woman deserved more. She deserved more. Wait, so I, it was a fake marriage, and then he gets mad that they had a baby out of wedlock. Yes. Yes. And he's an heir. It, 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 it's why. Make it make sense. <laughs> and, like, so he, there, there's no arc. There's a, there was no, like, re, there were no redeeming qualities. He's just spinning. He's just, like, this snake oil, like, mad midlife crisis. Like, oh, my God. 
I yeah. I was upset. I was like waiting for a moment. Like when I was reading it, I was like, is he on drugs? Like, is he on drugs? Does he have an illness? Is this like mad King George? Like what is fucking going on? Because there was no logical reason for the way that he was acting. A day. Um, he should have been scared because you not only is she waxing on poetically about everything, we're getting all the history. We're getting the French Revolution. We're hearing about Marie Antoinette. We're hearing about the people being mad. I'm like, can you wake up? Like, <laughs> I mean, a history lesson. So you would, yeah, I'm glad you did that. You would have been so mad because it was going. I hate up. that part, the history part of like when it's not woven into the story and it's just like this. Oh, by the way, I'm going to dump like these two pages worth of things on you. Chapters. Mm -hmm chapters and eden's not even a real place so i'm trying to like figure out where it's situated <laughs> like in all of that that's mm -hmm. wild to go to so much in depth about the history and not choose an actual place that's weird yeah that was we're close enough to london but he's a baron but it was like he had a castle and like he's I just he's a baron he's literally scraping the bottom of the totem pole when it comes it's to a baron yeah, he seems psycho like psycho. He he seemed like a psychopath, and he wasn't a narcissist because he wasn't unfeeling. The man felt everything. So not only that, we had to hear his dribble about like how he felt bad, but he only felt bad because he was being inconvenienced. I'm like, at least a narcissist would be unfeeling. Like just do yeah. the damn thing. We didn't even get that entertainment. He wasn't even like just like pure evil. He was just bad at being a douche. That's what it was. Yeah, it was just like. And I think, it, like, when we first meet him or something, like, he's, like, in a bathrobe and he's, like, crying and screaming to God, like, on the floor and stuff. And I was like, oh, he's mentally unwell. Like, he is mentally unstable. But still, I don't understand. Like, there was no reasoning behind it. And I don't approve this rap. You know, I struggle with mental health. This is not it. <laughs> this is the representation that I need. Okay, I was like, this is ridiculous. But yeah, there was, I think what was a little off-putting, so there are a lot of trigger warnings. It's very dark and mm -hmm. it's meandering. But I think like all the descriptions of the characters that either had a childlike mentality or like childlike like female bodies, he kept gravitating towards like these characters in his life. And I, I didn't know what to make of that. But it's also kind of written in a way where you you know that the author knows that it's inappropriate like that yeah. he's trying to make a point to what end i didn't you know gather um because by the time it's made like i'm i was exhausted so you know at 60 percent, and i was like girl you got my eyeballs and you're gonna wrap this up i need to know <laughs> and that fake marriage i i i was just done i was done you can't even marry her after all of this after he betted her just to, well, no, it was just before, so you could, so you could bet her. Like, fake it. Fake marriage? You have to go through more effort to do that than just freaking marrying her. Yes! Husband. Oh, my God. And his Did little she know it? No. Okay. So she thought they were actually married. Mm-hmm. Which is why she laid down. Okay. And then actually she finally laid down. She's over here, like, reproducing a whole nother human. He's blaming her because that human is not, like, legitimate. Like, as if everybody, like, Marianne was everybody. So Jane, his, her sister was mad at Marianne because you ain't taking these advances and clearing these checks that I've been running up to keep up appearances. Her brother was mad at her because, oh, our father loved you and you sent away my sister, which I thought the brother had, like, a weird obsession with the older sister, which was, like, Odd to me that was mm -hmm. wasn't the brother also helping him with the smuggling business though. Yes. Okay. So then he's like, "I'm a parlay this situation to get favor with Thomas," and he wasn't it. He was trash. Like everybody was horrible. Yeah. Like, it doesn't make any sense as to why he would be so mad that she saw like his smuggling business in the beginning because his br her brother worked with him. So it's like if you're telling me, you're telling on your brother. So like there was never and he had. Doubt. Like 40 people working for him because I remember him talking to the brother about that and the brother's like you know like someone's gonna tell so and why is this mad at the 16 year old girl that saw it like and it made no sense because Raglan told him that he said no so he was making a secret passage which means he had to like trust the men that were working on it so and they were fine they were raking in the dough everyone's drinking everybody's like you know getting all of this stuff on the low and he wanted to increase production so he had to add new men and Raglan said we shouldn't do that because more people are going to know. And I really feel like it's like what Samantha said. I think because he was embarrassed 
because she mm. wouldn't sleep with him and she wasn't like every other server woman, yeah. which we got scenes of that too. Okay, mm. women just laying out like buffets and like graciously doing it um, because yeah. they could. Like he, she like embarrassed him. She was 16. Yeah. I'm like, but so everybody knew, but it was like a running joke that everybody knew of the passage anyway. Everybody knew. He wasn't doing anything secret. And like he, oh man, this man. Yeah. Didn't we Every man. The one though where she was super young? Huh? Which book did we recently read where she was really young in the beginning, but like you could just pretend that she wasn't and it didn't read it? It was Sky O'Malley. Oh, she was, was O'Malley where she was. She okay. was 16. He was 26. There was a 10 year age gap. Right. Between but she read a little bit older. Plus, we had like a ton of jump, time jumps. So, like, she wasn't 16 for that long as Sky O'Malley. But yeah. in this one, I feel like they just kept on reminding us I know. how young she was. Yeah. Sky O'Malley had agency, and you could you know, slightly say, okay, it, it, it was the time because all her, her sisters also got married when they were like 14, 16 years old. Yeah. Okay. And 10 years in the grand scheme of thing with all of the time jumps, because we saw Sky O'Malley as an adult, as a woman, and her right? 20, like, yeah. yeah, she was 25, 26 at the end of the first book. Um, so it wasn't that, that much of a difficult thing to just pretend she wasn't a minor, but Thomas was old. He was 40. <laughs> Four D and, and, and acted older than 40 in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> yes, he did. And um, even from like the other characters, like the costume that she wore as a milkmaid, yeah. like come on. I don't understand the I don't understand like the masquerade that like, came out of nowhere. <laughs> like, she's staying with her sister, who really is just an employee of the guy she's staying with. They just happen to have an arrangement. And then it's all of a sudden like, oh, and she's gonna go to the masquerade. I was like, but you're like no one. How are you invited to this party? And then it was like overnight they got her this milkmaid outfit that was super revealing. And she's like, I don't think I should wear it. And she's like, oh, no, you should you definitely should. Where where is this all coming from? It just felt so yeah. random. Yeah. And with the nobleman, you're right. Who are you? But she pitched just at the ticker. He had to take her. Yeah. Like, and the thing with him being this age, too, is like, even with the descriptions, like in the beginning, like his sensuous lips. And no, I could not imagine him as that. Like, I imagined him decrepit. Like, the person I imagined him as it was like, um, oh my God, the guy from Hunchback of Notre Dame. Like, the, oh, old, that's the good. old guy freaking singing about Hellfire. Oh, yeah, mad that Esmeralda, like, oh, she's bewitching me because you're a pervert. She's yeah, you. that's okay. literally how I imagine this man. Okay. That That is so him. Oh, my God, I cannot see it. <laughs> it's true. He was like, oh, yeah. her. Um, it's logic. It's him. Oh, my God. That's him. That's Thomas. Out yeah, here in smuggling costumes, like, trying to still do it all. I am impressed, though, with everybody who could get through this beginning because I think I was, like, 50 pages in, and I was like, we're literally just getting to her whipping, and it's been 50 pages of this, and I think it wasn't until, like, 80 or 90 that she, like, was put in that room, and I'm just like, why do we have the first, like, 100 pages of this book only focusing on this one thing? And we didn't even know why yet. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, we didn't even know why yet. This is if this is the rest of the book, I cannot. <laughs> it was it was the text to speech, the text to speech for five straight hours just <laughs> put me through it. Did you have it sped up at all? Can you adjust the speed on that? It can go from one one point five and then two, and I had it on two the whole time with a British accent, with a British accent. That text works. And and his voice is like the enhanced version, so he has like a little bit more inflection, Jamie. <laughs> I mean, my British dude. Um, no, it felt like hell. It really did. I don't know how people can do text to speech. I literally wanted to cry. Like it was awful. <laughs> it was awful. I need to find Jamie's voice and put it in there. I just wanted. To, I just want to try it out and see. Gosh, it was. He needs, to yes. be he needs to be whipped. Fair game. Oh, right. He well, should have been whipped. He, that's what I'm saying. I was like, okay, is he going to get his? Is there going to be an arc? Like, where are we going with this girl? I, I was trying to rock with her. And it just never, that revenge plot was non existent. Like, 
I, yeah. that's like that carriage vow to like a vengeance is what I kept waiting for. It was never delivered. All while like that's getting so the funny. history of the real world, but it never yeah. completed. To, it was it was a lot. And he the never history of the it. real world as we are in a fictional place. That's so strange. And it was just dark and traumatic and went on and on and on. Um, I'm wondering if it's because it's a gothic romance. So I'm not too mm. familiar with too many gothic romances. And when I do start reading them, people always tell me like gothic romances or gothic books in general don't have to have an HEA. Um, so I'm wondering, is it her writing or is it because it was a gothic romance that it was just so dark and weird and not romantic i mean i thought too i wondered that too i thought you know what it's late 70s so i was expecting this sort of like slower pace slice of life but not that like like uh, so and i was thinking like maybe because eden they kept talking about this castle and it is right. it's like this contained space that he rules and like everyone's like melancholy i was thinking about it in that way but we're moving around you know so i don't know Oh, I know. She said, okay, not a normal gothic romance. I was just trying it up to it being a gothic romance because no. those aren't always happy. But it didn't even feel like a romance. Like no. nothing was focusing on their love for one another That's and true. like wanting to root for them to be together. I mean, because do they actually end up together? Like, are they? Yeah, but like to your point, how many times on page are they really together? Mm -hmm. okay. we, we don't get very many scenes of them together. Um, it's not romantic at all. It's not romantic at all. Like this is a, like a, a battle of wills, but it's a battle to bet her. And it's almost like, it's not like happy. It's almost like he lost, like he lost. Um, yeah. He's not really trying to pursue her. He's trying to evade the whole situation. Like even with the fake marriage and stuff like that. So like they do end up mm -hmm. like, together. But it's just like, it's more, if I read like a tragedy, like if this was a Shakespeare, this would be a tragedy. Mm. This would not be a comedy if we're talking about like Shakespeare. This is a tragedy for sure. Okay, so her other books are also dark. So this is just very much her thing. I mean, someone said that you were going to read the rest of the series. I mean, if you want to, go ahead. I feel like if you're a historical romance, like true, like, you want the more romance aspect this isn't a book for you but i could see like if you like historical fiction and stuff like that that this yeah. wouldn't bother you as much but it just felt like the dark was like i don't know how to explain it like didn't even have a purpose like why yeah. was she locked in that fuming room that normally killed people from the toxins and mm -hmm. then whipped and then um like i think she like actually did die like she stopped breathing at one point and they thought she was dead and then yeah. she, like woke back up i'm like what is what is the point of this scene? Like the whole first section of the book, what is the point of whipping her? Right. But it yeah. just felt like it was there to be dark and not to like serve a point to the story, which I don't love. That's true. It was kind of like trauma porn a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't mind bonkers, but when, when the romance is is the reason for it. Like, yeah. this was mm -hmm. not romantic. Like, I, I will go on a ride with you if it's, like, angsty. Yeah. And, like, we're going back within, like, the are like, fighting to be together through the bonkers plot. Yeah. And I'm thinking yeah. of Shanna, where that hero bent over backwards for Shanna. No matter what she did, he was always, like, I'm, I'm, I love you and I'm going to be there for you. And I hated one. her so much. <laughs> I know, but, like, he was so into her that literally mm -hmm. she had him imprisoned. And he still right. was like, I love you. To that point, there has to be at least one redeeming character, I feel like, for yeah. me to be invested. And so he like, was either one. the hero or the heroine. But for this one, the hero was trash and the heroine was just so young. Like and you knew nothing about her other than her childlike innocence. Did she have any personality? No. No, just saying no. The woman said no well. So at least she said no. We got that lesson. <laughs> yeah, that's it though. Even her sister, who I who I thought was trash, had way more personality. Yeah. And Raglan, his right hand man, I'm like, well, could we get like a romance between him and like what was it? Like they kept talking about Jenny and Dolly, and I'm like, I'd much rather like follow this storyline. Like, let's please not leave Raglan. Like he was much more interesting mm -hmm. than yeah. Thomas was. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. 
Okay, so gothic romances usually have confinement. Okay, I see. Okay. I see. But it just didn't feel like there was a reason to it. So yeah, that would make sense. She was just throwing it in there to fit the niche. Yeah. I feel like we might need to read another gothic romance to be able to compare. Like, well, the like what are like historical gothic romances? There's one that's like, oh my goodness. Hold on. Like Galen or something. Oh, what is it called? It's a male male gothic romance. Oh. Oh. I'll find it. Hold on. Gay Gaywick by Vincent Verga. I think he was like one of the first like authors to write like queer romance in this genre what when was it published oh my god ages originally published 1980 oh the cover is so stunning it's out of print i've been like searching for this cover forever it goes on ebay one time guys i was on ebay bid and like in my mind i had a i had a number that i was willing to go up to and I was so like into this eBay bid. And at some point it was like in the 300s. <laughs> you were going to get it? I lost. It wasn't for even like me not willing to go that high. It was, I lost. This they cover? Were yeah. This was published in the 80s? May yeah. Oh, maybe it was rewritten. Hold on. Let me see what the publication it's is. He has a really interesting interview, a uh, trailblazer interview with the Faded Mates podcast. Where he oh, talks about it. I feel like I've seen this cover before. Have you shown me this before? It's this one. Yeah, I've, sh I've shown it to you before. Okay. I I have like eBay notifications, thrift books notifications for this book. Oh, like, is I'm he dying. like captive of his? I don't know. Oh, Wow. Yeah, he was says, able to write the first gay gothic novel. He was the first. Yeah. It said he was innocent until he fell captive to the brooding master in Sinister Secrets of Gaywick. Interesting. Does the author have other books? Oh, it's a trilogy. Yeah. So I want to read that one. That one looks really interesting. It was published in 1980, but it's impossible to find a cover. Why does this author have a bunch of map books? <laughs> like he wrote books of maps of Texas and Massachusetts and New York and Illinois. Or, I wonder yeah, if he was a historian or something. That's all his author profile says on Goodreads. Yeah, and then the rest within the series. He's a cartographer. So I wonder if the hero, I wonder if the heroes have anything that they have to. Yeah. Anyways, his, his interview is really interesting on the Faded Mates podcast. I need to check that out. This cover. Wow. Rachel saying, after Midnight and the Vampire Who Loved Me by Teresa Medeiros. We like Teresa Medeiros. We've read a couple books from her. Gothic panel. Gothic paranormal historical romance. Okay. Uh, but 2005. Too late for us. I loved those. Those were good. Dowry of Blood. Oh, my God. Guys, could you believe I just read this book, like, last month? And I'm, like, sick with myself. Because I'm, like, that easily became top five favorite books. It's, I like, manifold. You could pick that up at any time. It's yeah. never too late. It's no too late. Okay. Like, I'm immediately saying it's, like, in my top five favorite romances, and I read it last month. <laughs> it's so good. I do think, like, Jane Eyre and Northanger Abbey kind kind of are gothic. Kind, I mean, like, Northanger Abbey has, like, the setting, I guess, for that. But they're not, like, super – and, like, Jane Eyre has the whole wife – I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't read it, but, like, the wife situation. Mm -hmm. um, but – I don't know. And Dorian Gray is not a romance. So I don't think I would, I would consider that a, a gothic romance, but I feel like when I think of like gothic romances, they're very much more like sweeping kind of gothic. And I just mm -hmm. haven't read any like that. I mean, like, I guess that's like what, it's what I would imagine like this photo should feel like, and mm -hmm. that's not what this book felt like. <laughs> um, and so, and I feel like I, that Gaywick one sounds super interesting because it was, um, like a captive romance and that's the kind of sense i get from gothic where i think 
Monica had said like it has to have some sort of confinement involved. And I feel like that would make it a very strong gothic romance, but the atmosphere has to be there too. And I it, like, it has to all work for the plot, which it did not in here. So, and, but I don't know if I get that atmosphere. Right. So like Wuthering Heights, Jane Eyre, but those are all like the classics. Mm -hmm. I don't know about like written in like the seventies, eighties and the nineties that would be considered mm -hmm. gothic. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Those are our classics. Yeah. Um, so one, another sure. list had um, Phantom of the Opera on it as like a gothic romance. <laughs> But I was like, yeah, but those are like the classics. Like, what are some that like, I don't know, that are good that some that we could read for this book club? <laughs> and this game with Tally of Blood though is a good one, but also that's paranormal. So, mm -hmm. but uh, see, paranormal. I feel like you can get away with some shit when it comes to paranormal romances. Yes, there's that a reason. Makes it really gothic. Like, a vampire killing someone? Okay, he's a vampire. But like mm -hmm. him just flogging this innocent 16-year-old girl? No. Even if he were a vampire, there's no excuse for what we all read. Yeah. yeah. But you can be a little bit more bonkers and crazy and get a little bit more leeway when it comes to paranormal romances. I feel so. Yeah. But somebody mentioned uh, Sky O'Malley again about the epic tale in the timeline. I'm convinced that there's no other author that could write what Sky O'Malley was. Like, I just... That's that was so crazy. crazy. That was actually crazy. Wait, but like thinking of Sky O'Malley as a show makes me uh, so excited. It would be the best show. Yeah. Different seasons, different husbands. Seriously. And then did you ever read book two? Um, I started it and I didn't finish it once I found out who she ends up with. <laughs> but I really liked him. So I'm I excited. Like him. Out of all the heroes other than like her trash husband in the beginning, he was my least favorite. Why? He was the only one that was like super nice to her. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I was excited when I saw that because I was like, because the premise of book two is the hero of book one is dead. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. But didn't she think he would? No, he thought she was dead. There was yeah, he thought she was dead because she was kidnapped by those pirates and then sold to like a sex, um, like a body house. And she Very lost her body. Yeah. He was shot though. He was like, there's so many good tropes in that series too. And this one had nothing. It couldn't even do the revenge plot right. Like that's true. And it really wasn't captor captive because he didn't hold her for that long. No. To get anything. Dude, I I liked your Sky O'Malley recap blog, Samantha. That was <laughs> that was long. It was a while. Like, all the things that happened. So that was really long. But like all the things that happened, there it was, was so yeah. And uh, Beatrice Small didn't like bog down the story with a lot of history or a lot of like flourishing writing. Like I feel like although this book was bonkers and crazy, there were so many slow moments of like just over the top description that could have been cut out. That like, nothing was happening. I started skimming for the dialogue, and I would go like paragraphs until I came to more dialogue. I'm like. Am I really missing important stuff or is all of this just not important? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe that is the difference too, is that yes, it was bonkers, but like Beatrice Small or Sky O'Malley was like, this is happening, this is happening, like action, action, action. This was so slow. It was so slow. And I didn't know also I'd like I could have skipped around, but the way that it was told from the very beginning, like it was like ass backwards. Like, so it okay. starts out like when she's like in prison and then we find out why 200 pages later. Um, so I didn't know like when we were in like, I'm not even gonna call them chapters in a section, an entire section of the book and we just get one asterisk that changes it into somebody else's POV. I didn't know what part of the story we're gonna like loop back to. Like, instead of just like saying that he was going to the masquerade or she was going to the masquerade, we're like, taught, we're in the modiste's point of view about how the modiste is making this dress. Like, we learn about it backwards. And then we learn that she's going to like this masquerade and that's why the dress is being made. I just didn't like structurally. I got lost. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, did you guys read the, the ebook on Kindle Unlimited? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There were mistakes too. Oh. That. repeated lines like and i'm like is this for there were repeated paragraphs i literally was like flip back and forth between the pages i'm like these two were just repeated yeah. yeah 
I thought I was tripping. I thought it was me. I thought I had like messed up the text to speech for a second and it was like repeating some things. Um, but no, it was just not well done. It was the ebook. Yeah, I was mad because I was like, should this be taking me this long? Like maybe it's not that long. Cause I'm like, I what was it like 500 pages? I'm like, this doesn't take me nine hours because it kept like, you know, it charts your reading. So I was like, it doesn't take me nine hours to read 500 pages. It just doesn't. Right. Yeah. Well, this this copy is 561 and it has tiny font. So Okay. I um, love when historicals have the red spread edges. I have I one know. by um Kathleen Kathleen E. Woodowis and I just love it. My next one is. I have that with me. Yeah. Miss Kathleen is all up in my library. Is that her next read? No, it's not. Huh? That's her next read. Kathleen Woodowis? It's no. our next month's book. Man, but why did we have to pick two back-to-back, -back, like, heavy hitters, I feel like? Well, this is only 430 pages. So. Oh, shoot. All my books fell. Which Kathleen? Let me see. Flame. Oh, th wait. Are we reading The Wolf and the Dove or The Flame and the Flower? Flame and the Flower. Oh, look. I have The Wolf and the Dove version of the red. Ooh. Oh, I have this version. Ooh, I feel like I had that. I need to see if I have... I don't want to read this copy because it's, like... <laughs> Old. I have a couple oh, copies. But oh my god! Yeah. I have like a couple copies of this one. This is my favorite one, though. Yeah, I have a couple copies too. I think I actually have a like um trade paperback copy, so I might read that one. Because like I just her at like a library is... sale. So. Oh, I like that version. Um, somebody said, or Monica said, "The Time of the Hunter's Moon" oh, by yeah. Victoria Holt is a gothic romance. I think I have a couple of hers. I, I do. I do have a couple of Victoria Holt books. I forgot about her. Yes. Maybe we'll revisit Gothic Romance next year. We do already have, by the way, we do already have some of our books picked for next year, the first three months. They're on our Instagram page if you want to check. And this is, I mean, this is classic, though. This is like. I know. It, this is just gonna be a history lesson, guys. Okay? Yeah, this is the book to pick up. I'm excited. 1972. I don't know if I'm excited. I'm just. I'm just gonna start a week before. Give myself a week to read it, and not two days. <laughs> oh, but I am excited because we're reading Julie Garwood, Megan McKinney, and okay. Phoebe Kahn. I don't think I've read a Phoebe Kahn yet. Samantha, okay. have you read Adriana Herrera's new historical romance? The Prince, the topic one? I yeah. No, I haven't. It was so good. It's so good. And I was like, Samantha has to read this if she has not yet. Okay, I'll read it. I have a signed copy. I just saw her and she signed it, but. It was written for you. It was written for you. I liked the first one. I like all of her books, really. I just don't know why I haven't gotten around to that one. It's so well, I didn't love the audio, but I switched halfway through to reading it physically, and I liked it physically better. But I'll get to it. I'll read it then. That's and exciting. I want to see what your thoughts on Cora. Two, and they're me cute. Yeah, you'll love it. Yay! It's, it's Parisian. Like, they're going on dates. Yeah. Yeah. Tiffany, did you read the first one, too? Yes. Okay. Did you? Which one did you like better? I... Mm. I think I like the first one better. Oh, okay. Because I didn't read the first one yet. So, yeah. I liked the first one. I like the first. I like them both, but for different reasons. Yeah. I mean, yeah, for different reasons. And they, and I appreciate that, although we're like in the same, we're basically same place, same time. Like all three of them come on the same train. They have different yeah. places to do there. And it reads like two completely different worlds because of how Cora ushers it, her into like a sapphic like Parisian experience yeah. is really kind of amazing. It's really good. It's really Okay. Good. Now I'm excited. I'll read it for sure. For sure. Oh, the Victoria Holt one is on KU. Okay. Okay. I feel like I want to read another Gothic romance just to have perspective on what it's supposed to be like. Like, is this normal? <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm and Sky Valley has like different people that she ends up with, like different stages of her life, different romances. But in the second book, I mean, I can spoil it. In the second book, she ends up with this guy named Adam. Who's her like guy friend. Which yeah. she even asked him, she's like, why don't you marry me? And he's like, but you don't love me. So I don't want to marry you. <laughs> and I was like, 
So it's like a friends to lovers situation. <sighs> she settled with him because all her. Didn't you like the the brothel oh. guy the best? <laughs> he loved her. Okay, yeah. stop. He loved her he the best. Yeah. This oh. sounds like a limited series, like 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 a soap, like a soap right? opera. It, it really does need to turn into one. Which ones have you read, Mel? I'm curious. Which ones have you read? Does this have an audiobook? Mm, They're yeah. releasing them. I think it should have one now. They just came out with them. This is oh, Kathleen, what are with you? They're long. but You like Adam? So good. That's so nice for you. <laughs> well, you'll like the second book, man. I mean, I do agree that Nicholas was, like, bottom tier out of all of them. The guy that she's supposed to be end up with. Oh, yeah. Like, her, her, the guy she meets in the beginning. Yeah, the one that, like, she, like, fights the whole time to be with anyways. Yeah. Well, not really, because when she's, when she's remarried and they finally reconnect, she's, like, not interested in him. <laughs> she, like, loves the husband that she's with. Hey, who's Nicholas? No, Nicholas is the one that Nicholas is not the one that made wanted to make her like his mistress originally. No, I thought that oh, was I have my notes here. Oh, yeah, full of it. Niall was the main guy, right? Yeah, Nicholas is the one who was married and like his wife dies and his son dies, his only heir dies. How is she surviving all of this? Six. Her husband died in like a year. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. so the first one, I guess Niall. Okay, they didn't actually get married. They were about to get married when she got amnesia. No. Mm -hmm. Didn't she no. get married to someone else? She married the awful guy in the beginning that she was betrothed oh, to. Oh yeah, the, the the incest guy. The incest guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then he the dies, and then she finds. Oh, Nicholas is from the second book. We're all like trying to think of who the fuck is Nicholas. Because <laughs> then, so she marries that one guy, and then is reunited with Niall. And then, mm -hmm. but I thought Niall was married by that point. Was he not yet? He was to okay. that, like, to that nun lady or whatever. <laughs> the nun that hated him. And then yeah. she. No, no, no. A different lady. Oh, was it a different one in the beginning? She was a young Spanish lady, I think. Okay. Did she die? yeah bye um and then they got caught on the pirate ship and then she goes and she marries the guy who owned the brothel that's technically only her second husband because her and niall never got married mm -hmm. and then she comes back and marries um the guy who wanted to make her his mistress remember it was like a game he was he made a bet that he was gonna yeah. make her his mistress yeah and then fell in love with her and then fell in love with her. And then yeah. she married right. Niall. And then she married Niall. Yeah. And that's the first book, just four husbands. Wait, but why is Nicholas number six when she knows? I know she ends up with Adam. That's in the second book. Oh my God. But doesn't she have kids in the first book? Isn't that what you said? Yes. Five kids. Kids. Numerous kids. Okay. Like, yeah. Numerous kids. Yeah. At least five or six, I feel <laughs> like. So are there like second generation books? Like does this just keep going? And her, are her sisters going through the same like drama and like peril and like angst? No, one of her sisters is a nun and the others are just married. And this is a this is a generational book. I know that one of the books in the series is one of her kids. There's like 10. There are so many. Yeah. Yeah. I did get book two. Yeah. So basically, don't read this other Eden and read Sky O'Malley because Sky <laughs> O'Malley is a time. Okay. I'll so read what more happens to Niall? Does Niall just like die in the beginning of the book? I don't know. I, so I thought it was something with opium or something like that. Oh, because we looked it up. Yeah, we looked it up, and it was something with opium. Yeah. Anyways, this will turn into a Sky O'Malley live show if we let it. So that's about I'm it, guys. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Next month, we're going to be reading The Wolf and the Dove, which I'm... The Flame and the Flower. Terrified of. Flame and the Flower, not Wolf and the Dove. Oh, 
Yeah. Don't listen to me. Yes. Don't read the wrong one. <laughs> it should have the audio. Which is so. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. New. I wonder if they did anything different to them like other ones have. Yeah. Like Lisa Kleypas. But that's a yeah. whole <laughs> All right, guys. We will see you later. Bye. Bye.